Hi, thanks again for joining me on this Bible talk. Now this talk, it's called uh, Jesus in Your Heart is Biblical. Now the reason we're giving this talk is because I remember from years ago, sometimes maybe if you talked about maybe like kind of childhood testimonies and sometimes people used to, used to refer to, well, asking the Lord into your heart or they gave their hearts to the Lord. And I know that sometimes there was a bit of a, maybe a sort of a stigma that in a sense, just talking about asking the Lord into your heart or giving hearts to the Lord, that it might have been a little bit too shallow that somebody could say, well, I've just asked the Lord into my heart and it's just been almost been like an emotional thing without really understanding the importance of accepting Jesus as Savior from sin, repenting and living God's way. It is important to grasp these things. But uh, I think at the same time, yet yeah, we do want to have the correct understanding of Jesus as my Savior from sin, the repentance, being changed by Jesus to live his way. But at the same time, I think we still want to have this recognition the Lord is in our hearts and he does work in our hearts rather than just in our minds. Because sometimes we talk about we're reading things in the Bible, we're hearing things. And our minds are important. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. But we need God's truths to move from our minds into our hearts. So I believe in a sense that knowing the Lord in your heart it is important, and I think as Christians, we just want to completely grasp this idea of a relationship and having the Lord in our hearts. Because I remember years and years ago, I remember somebody who was, was a Christian, and I think because she'd been brought up in a Christian home, she had become a Christian, maybe from a young age, because she had Christian parents, and you know, that, that that's great, of course, thank God for Christian homes. And I remember in some kind of conversation, she was talking about, well, you know, maybe when I asked the Lord into my heart, and then she said, well, you, you know, and all that stuff that's not mentioned in the Bible, because the Bible does kind of talk about, well, actually believing in Jesus, believing on in Jesus, believing on Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, which, which is quite right. And because of the sort of mindset of the Orthodox, acceptance of Jesus, a saving Lord, which no, which is important. Sometimes we kind of have a reaction to the idea of well, just asking the Lord into our hearts. But I believe it's fine as long as we do understand the truths about needing a saviour from sin. So what I'd like to do as well is I'd like to read a couple of verses from the Bible just to uh, show the idea, consolidate the idea of the Lord being in our hearts and working in our hearts. And then, as we live the Christian life, aware of the Lord in our hearts, we can just continue with blessings. So the first couple of verses I'd like to read, it's Ephesians chapter 3, just verses 16 to 17, and Paul is talking about his prayer for the Ephesian believers. Ephesians 3, 16 to 17, and then praying to Jesus and that, yeah, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, so is Christ dwelling in your hearts. So that's the first passage of Scripture. The other Bible verse I'd like to look at, it's 1 Peter I'll need to find, I've lost the uh, lost reference. Yeah, 1 Peter 3, verses, yeah, it's 1 Peter 3, verses 15. It was bookmarked, but I just couldn't remember exactly what the verse was, and I had it written down. So, 1 Peter 3, verse 15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always, to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So the sanctify then, looking up as of a definition, is like setting apart. You're recognizing it as being holy, almost like kind of having that special 
having that sort of special place, that special recognition. And we do that for Jesus. We have that special recognition of him as Saviour and Lord. And that's in our hearts. Yes, I believe our minds are important. We do read our Bibles. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. By our minds, we do read and we assimilate things. We learn the truth. God's given us our minds. We do learn the truths of the Bible. We use our minds to do our work and to serve God. So minds are important. But in terms of a relationship, I think it is really important to really know the Lord working in your heart. Because it's like your soul, like your obviously your spirit, that's the true you. Your spirit in you is born again, so it's been perfected. But our body and our minds aren't. Obviously one day we will have new bodies. And in the meantime, we want to be perfected be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So in terms of your soul, I believe that's like your mind and your heart and your emotions. So they're not actually yet perfected. So they need to be constantly changed. And your your emotions are important. That God works, that's your actual, that's obviously your consciousness and your awareness. And God wants to work in that. And in a sense, like he starts, in your heart to change you. You have your heart and your emotion and your mind. So it's important to really be aware of Jesus in your heart. He's dwelling in your hearts. Yet you're born again by the Spirit of God. But at the same time, he's like dwelling in your hearts just to change you and just to bless you and change you. So then, as Peter says, we can give a reason to uh, an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and and fear. So, yeah, when you have the Lord in our hearts doing his work, he's changing us in our hearts and our emotions, and then people see the difference in us just to God's glory, and then hopefully that will give us an opportunity just for witness and for serving God. Okay, so, yeah, again, thanks for joining me on this talk, and uh, God bless you.